I want to give you a quick rundown of why using a sparse disk with Final Cut 10 is such an advantage. In Final Cut Classic, we had a way that we were used to working. We had a job folder, and in that job folder, we had a project file. And when, we, when you'd launch that project file, you'd see your bins, and inside your bins, you'd have a sequence. And we've worked this way for a long time. Final Cut 10 works a little bit different. When you start a new job in Final Cut 10, it's going to create two folders on your hard drive. If you're using an external hard drive, it's going to place those folders in the root of your hard drive. If you're using your system drive, it'll put it in your movies folder. And those two folders are called the Final Cut Events and the Final Cut Projects. Now, the Final Cut Events project has your Final Cut event, and it also has your keyword collections. And your Final Cut Projects folder will have your Final Cut Projects. Now, to understand what these words mean, the best thing to do is to compare these words to Final Cut 7. So in Final Cut 7, you had a job folder, but in Final Cut 10, you have a Final Cut events folder and a projects folder. In Final Cut 7, you had a project, and in Final Cut 10, you have an event, and in 7, you had a bin, and Final Cut 10, you have your keyword collections, and in Final Cut 7, you have your sequence, and in Final Cut 10, you have your project. The real problem come for me was that they use the word project in two totally different ways. And if you take a good look at this still, this graphic, and kind of burn this into your head, it'll help you understand a little bit more about how to make the transition from 7 to 10. So what I want to do now is I want to explain to you a really important thing about setting up a new project in Final Cut 10, and that's the use of what's called a sparse disk. If I look at this folder here, I can see that I have a bunch of folders, and these are old Final Cut 7 projects, but these that have this extra icon, this is called a sparse disk. And let me give you an example. If I come down here to say this job here, this Boys and Girls Club of America, and I double click this, what it's going to do is it's going to launch a virtual hard drive. So see this virtual drive here? Here is the icon that it generates. And it looks like one of these disk images because it's actually made by disk utility and it is a special type of disk image that becomes a virtual hard drive that lives on your physical hard drive. So this virtual drive lives on my promise raid and as you can see over here I have a lot of these. The beauty of this is when I open up this full this virtual drive I can see that I have multiple things in it. I have my job folder and I have the Final Cut Events and the Final Cut Projects folder. Now these are folders that Final Cut 10 makes itself. The reason we do this on a virtual disk is that if I had multiple jobs on this drive, there would be multiple jobs represented in these two folders. There might be a job for client stuff from client A, client B, and client C, and I might want to archive those, or maybe the client says, hey, uh, I want to buy all the media from you. Um, can you just send me the whole project over? It's really hard to dig into these folders and extricate the elements that are only necessary for a client or a job. But by putting the entire job on a sparse disk, it gives me the ability to, one, archive this project, but there's an added benefit to that, and it allows me to actually open that sparse disk from a remote machine. If you've ever tried to open a Final Cut 10 project that's on another machine on your network, well, Final Cut 10 doesn't let you do that. But through the use of a sparse disk, I can actually reach across my network, open up a Final Cut project that's somewhere else in the building, and it actually functions quite well through that sparse disk. Okay, what I want to do now is I'm going to show you how to actually make one of these because it's pretty important. I'm going to use Spotlight and I'm going to launch my Disk Utility. Now, Disk Utility is where you make the sparse disk. It's pretty easy to do. You come down here to File, New, New Blank Disk Image. Now, first thing I got to do is I got to pick what drive I want to put it on and I want to create another sparse disk on my Promise Raid. I always name jobs with the date the date that I started it. So this is 1302 19. 19 or 18? 19. 
good. I'm paying attention. And then it will be, I'm going to call it my sparse disk demo. And this is, this is where I would put a client name and a descriptor about the job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this because I'm going to use this name, this date and name in a few places, not the least of which will be right down here. This is the name of the disk image, but when I launch the disk, this is the name that it will show up as on my, on my desktop. So if I'm gonna, if I paste the same name there, the sparse disk and the disk will be actually, or the disk image will be actually called the same thing. The next thing, the next little trick about sparse disks is you have to decide early how big you want to make it. Now here's the here's the gotcha. The sparse disk can't really get to be. I, apparently there's some tricks in the terminal that I don't know how to do, but you got to decide how big you want it to be now. Um, the beauty of a sparse disk is, let's say I want it to be 100 gigabytes, okay? So I'm going to go gigabytes and then type in 100. If I make it 100 gigabytes, but I only put 100 megabytes in it, it will only be 100 megabytes. Actually, I think there's a little system overhead, but it'll only be as big as the stuff that you put in it. It only gets to be 100 gigabytes as you put more and more gigabytes in it. The only problem is it's really hard to make it larger than 100 gigabytes, and I don't know how to tell you how to do that. So figure out how much you're going to need, maybe double it, and then make it that big. So click OK, and then right down here under Image Format, come up here and say Sparse Disk Image. And that's all you have to do. Once I hit Create, it'll take me just a moment to create and mount the drive. And here it is down here. Uh, it's got a shortened name. And I can actually quit Disk Utility. If I open up my Finder window, I can see now I have a sparse disk image um, dated today's date, 2013, February 19th. And you can see I have 100 gigabytes available. Actually, 100 and change. I don't know how that works. But that's how you create a sparse disk. The next thing that I do to start my, my project is I actually have a folder over here called Final Cut 10 Templates. And I open that guy. I take these three folders. There's also a little tutorial here I made earlier. And I drag those into here. Very simple. And then the last place that I um, put my uh, project name, I'll put it right there also. This is just like the old Chris Fenwick job folder that I've used and taught many times. And then these two folders, the Final Cut Events and Final Cut Projects, will be relevant to this particular job. So the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually launch Final Cut 10. And I'm going to show you just how this works. And we're actually going to use this name one more time, this sparse disk demo. Um, so Final Cut 10 opens up. The, app, the application launches. Now, when Final Cut 10 launches, it immediately queries all of your mounted hard drives and says, hey, do we have any events? Hey, do we have any projects to open? So here is the sparse disk. It's called sparse disk demo. And then here is a singular event which is already created in, let me come back here, it's actually in my Final Cut events. See how it says put project name here? Okay, this is actually the last place I will paste that name that we've been using. I'll paste it in there, and now when I step back to the finder, the Final Cut events is actually called the same name that we've been calling everything. So in an event, we have keyword collections which are further, um, uh, organized with with folders and you can create more keyword collections by right clicking here and say create new keyword collection so that's how you actually organize your media by putting your importing your media into a keyword collection or applying a keyword to a piece of media and then down here in the project library and this is something different about Final Cut 10 you don't put your sequences in your project you put your projects inside your events Actually, no, you don't put your projects inside your events. You put your projects in the project library. So down here, I'll come down here and rename this. And this is where I would call it um, my client name, uh, the project, and then I would give it an element name. So like it might be, you know, 
Apple Mac World show open, and then I'd give it a version number. I like two numbers, version 01. So that's how I would start a job. Every job I start the same way. My keywords are organized the same way. Um, they're broken down into my reels and my graphics and my noise. And uh, by pre-creating these things, it makes it easier for you to start your jobs too. Later. <laughs>